What's going on YouTube? It's Universal Fragrances here, back with another video on the House of Argos. We're gonna be doing a top 10 today, as promised. Uh, I don't know if you saw it in my shorts videos a while ago. It took me longer than I thought to do a top 10 on the House of Argos because they have so many good fragrances. I wanted to take the time, kind of go through them again, wear them, regardless of the weather or the season, kind of wear them all, very close uh, space and time, just making sure that I really do have this top 10 nailed down. Now we'll go ahead and we'll just start with the three that I do not have a full bottle of, and that is Poor Home, Poor Femme, and Palace Athene. So these three right here are the only ones I don't have a full bottle of, and I really like Poor Home and Poor Femme. Poor Home, very fresh. It's got like a boozy gin note with a lot of botanicals, citrus, uh, very fresh, beautiful fragrance, but it, it's not quite as unique as the other Argos, in my opinion. It doesn't quite have the lasting power as some of the other Argoses, probably just because of that very citrusy, fresh vibe that it has. But both Poor Home and Poor Femme are excellent fragrances, so do not sleep on those. But for me, I'm going to have to go number 10 on the House of Argos as Palace Athene. And I'm, you know, please leave your top 5 or 10 down below on what you've experienced on the House of Argos. Because depending on who you ask, this order could be completely reversed. I could see a lot of people how they may have Poor Home or even Palace Athene as their number one fragrance from the House of Argos. So for me, Palace Athene will probably be the next bottle that I buy personally. Somewhat similar vibes to Adonis Awakens. Um, not quite as much rose or sandalwood in there. A lot of red berry and florals. This is just a wonderful fragrance. Feminine leaning, absolutely, but a guy could wear it. I think a guy, if they wore it, would get a lot of compliments. Got some violet, berry, a little bit of sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, vanilla, and the uh, the base notes. But man, Palace Athene is an excellent fragrance. This will definitely be uh, my next bottle from the House of Argos. So we're going to go Palace Athene at number 10. And this is where it really gets tough for me because this is really just all down to personal preference because all these fragrances that Argos does are very high quality, so it really just depends on your personal taste, the type of situation and the season that you wear them. So I'm just gonna go based of all, you know, what I like to wear the most, and regardless of season, we're just gonna go through it. So number nine for me is Love Triumphs Over War. Very good fragrance, very floral. Extremely floral, well-blended, slightly powdery, Get a good hint of that cinnamon bark. I believe it's got tuberose in there. White musk in the dry down. I'm not gonna get too much into the notes of these because I've covered that before in the individual reviews of most of these fragrances. Um, I still think I may have a couple to go in terms of individual reviews, but for me, Love Triumphs Over War was one of the more challenging fragrances from the house. It is, uh, I wouldn't say it's feminine because of the florals because they do blend it so well and there is some masculine base notes in there. But it's very interesting for the Love Triumphs Over War. There is a very, you know, deep contrast in there between the florals and the base notes. It's kind of a yin and a yang. You definitely get a lot of the cinnamon bark in there. And yeah, for me, it was definitely one of the more challenging fragrances from the House of Argos. I've learned to love it. In fact, I actually get a lot of compliments on it. I'm not really factoring that into the equation very much here. This is more my personal opinion on what I love from the House of Argos. But yeah, for me, when I first got a sample of Love Triumphs Over War, I wasn't sure if I was going to buy a bottle. I broke down and bought it because I really do like that type of fragrance and I don't have many like it in my collection. So that was kind of the deciding factor on that. But yeah, number nine will go Love Triumphs Over War. Now, these are not in order because I don't want to spoil anything. So we're going to kind of take these and switch them here. But number eight, I'm gonna go Baccio Immortal. Again, this could easily be a lot of people's number one fragrance. And man, it's hard to believe I'm ranking this number eight because this really is a beautiful fragrance, man. Raspberry, leather, very leathery, a lot of raspberry. Those are the two main notes that you get. Again, I'm not gonna to get too much into the detail of the, the notes on here, but one of my favorite things about this fragrance is you do get that heavy burst, of course, of the raspberry and leather, but the dry down on this, very, very good. Lots of oud. Got some musk in there, a little bit of sweetness in the base notes. I think there's vanilla 
in there as well, but there's definitely musk and oud in there. And it really gives the dry down a nice contrast between that leather and the raspberry opening. Uh, one of my you know, favorite, I wouldn't really say casual wearing fragrances, but it's one of those that no matter what the season, because of the notes in there, whether it's cool weather, warm weather, Baccio Immortal just works. And you can see, you know, I have used a pretty good amount of it considering the amount of things that I have in my collection. A lot of these bottles are close to full because I, I don't even remember how many bottles I have in my collection now. I think it's over 50 or 60. So the more you have, the less you use of each one. And Baccio Immortal is one of those fragrances that I sort of gravitate towards as a quick grab and go. If I can't really decide what to wear, or don't have like a particular occasion and you just want to smell good and you know the dry down of Baccio Immortal will never let you down. Wonderful fragrance. I can easily see how it might be somebody else's number one on the whole list. So now this one will stay where it's at. This is Adonis Awakens at number seven. Again, it's hard to believe I'm ranking this number seven. That just shows how good and how deep the entire house of Argos really is. But you get such a nice mix in this. You get raspberry, vanilla, you get rose, and you have rose absolute, I believe, in the dry down. So that rose really sticks around. It's kind of like a jammy, not overly like musty rose. It's like really jammy and fruity. Still floral. Great dry down on this, man. The, the sandalwood note in here is beautiful. It's dominant right along with that rose. And one of my favorite parts about this fragrance is if you read the notes on their website, there is a note of chestnut in here, and it's it's somewhat pronounced. It's more pronounced on the dry down, but that's one of the things that makes me really, really love Adonis Awakens is the, the note of chestnut in there with um, the rose, vanilla, raspberry, sandalwood. Adonis Awakens is a great fragrance, so we're going to go number seven on Adonis Awakens. Now, number six for me... Man, this is Brevito della Caccia, one of the uh, first bottles, actually it was the first full bottle I bought from the House of Argos. It was only a 30 ml, so that was kind of a mistake. Always better value going with the 100 ml. And for me, Brevito della Caccia is a very, very nice outdoorsy fragrance. You've got matte, sage, juniper berry, oil of fluve, birch, just a wonderful, slightly sweet, outdoorsy you don't really get a whole lot of like animalic notes in here mm. Mm -mm. yeah again hard to believe that i'm ranking that as like what number six i think so Revito della caccia number six very outdoorsy fragrance very fresh in my opinion more suited for spring and summertime you could even say i, I put it in my gym fragrances and you could probably put Vito Della Caccia and Poor Home, as far as gym fragrances go, uh, those would both be good choices. I know Christian Petrovic says he doesn't make gym fragrances, and I say that in terms of, I don't just spray that on before I go to the gym. I know what days I'm going to the gym, I know what time I'm going to the gym, and I choose my fragrance that morning accordingly, and that's really all there is to it. There's nothing, you know, oh, I have to wear this to the gym and spray it on right before I go in. To me, that's a little bit of a waste of a fragrance, and I also don't change fragrances during the day. I always wear the same thing, and if I need to reapply later, I may do that. But again, gym fragrances, is it specifically for the gym where you just spray it on before you walk in? Not really. You know, I just choose those in the morning time on days that I know I'm going to the gym. So just to clarify that for some people. Now, the next one, as we get down into this top five, this is where it gets really, really difficult for me because all these fragrances I love, they are home runs. For me, 10 out of 10 fragrances for all of these here. So I'm gonna go Birth of Venus as number five, one of their new releases. And again, I can see how a lot of people may have this as top of the house along with any of these five here. So one of the things with Birth of Venus is you get like a very, very peach, grapefruit, salted chocolate, raspberry, slightly gourmand note. It's one of the things with Birth of Venus, they kind of advertise it more as like a feminine, a little bit more towards women type of fragrance, but I think guys are going to get a lot of compliments on this. It's really just a very nice, fruity, decadent, gourmand fragrance with some slightly masculine base notes. 
dry down on this is very dark chocolate. The chocolate stays with you all the way through the dry down, which is really nice to me because you don't get a ton of the chocolate on the opening. It's mixed in very well, again, with the peach, raspberry, some of the florals in here. But this stuff is amazing, man. Birth of Venus is excellent. I'm liking it more and more. I think it's going to age very well, too, like a lot of these Argos fragrances. So if you're a guy, especially, I know a lot of women love this, but if you're a guy, do not sleep on Birth of Venus, man. This is one of the top fragrances, I think, for guys during the wintertime. Again, fruity, floral, gourmand, wonderful stuff. So not to fool anyone or give it away, but number four, we're going to go... Tricked y'all. They almost look the same with the color. But number four, I'm actually gonna go Neiman Lion. And Neiman Lion, in terms of uniqueness, and in terms of being specifically for a man, like a men's fragrance, I would probably have to put Neiman Lion as number one. And again, that just shows the depth of the House of Argos because I truly love this fragrance. It's very unique, extremely resiny. It's got some sweetness, a little bit of outdoors, you know, kind of vibes. You got the oak moss, the pine, Scottish pine, animalic leather and dry down, and you got a pretty good amount of oud in here as well. That's like almost like a old wood, like churchy vibe to it, like a church-like vibe and very outdoor, sweet, very complex. Again, Christian Petrovic put a warning label on Neiman Lion, not for anyone under 21 years old or anyone who has an experienced nose and I can kind of see that in a lot of ways, you know. When I was younger, I don't think I would have appreciated this. I didn't appreciate some of the fragrances that I enjoy now that are no longer available. Um, Cooper Square and Andy Warhol Silver Factory from Bond Number no. 9. Got samples of those when I first started getting into those in the original Creed, some of those. And it was really interesting because I didn't really like them at first. As years passed, I still had them because I never used them smelled them again, and they became some of my favorite fragrances. And of course, they're out of stock on both of those. So Neiman Lion, if you were able to get it, I think it might be still available on their website. I'm not 100% sure on that, but Neiman Lion, if you can grab it and you like some of those older like retro fragrances that kind of remind you of some of the men's fragrances of the 70s or 80s where they use a lot of oak moss and it is truly a masculine fragrance. I would probably go ahead and, you know, grab Neiman Lion. I don't think they do any samples of it, so it'll have to be a blind buy. But this is terrific stuff, man. I really do enjoy Neiman Lion. So I'm going to put that as number four and Donne as number three. Sweet citrus. you got a ton of woods in here. Beautiful dry down. Again, I'm not going to get too much into the notes of these, but this is just a wonderful spring and summer fragrance. And you could even definitely wear it in the cool weather because Donne to me is very powerful, very resiny, kind of a warm fragrance. So if you're looking for like a winter warmer or something to, to make you feel warm, Donne has those really nice bright citrus notes along with like three or four different types of woods and the heart note and base notes. This is wonderful stuff all the way to the dry down. Again, very bright and warm, sweet, resiny. It's got um, cystus in there as well. So it's it's not really floral. It's kind of more of like a like a sweet note that I think comes from that, like a sweet resiny note that comes from that cystus. And it blends beautifully with the citrus notes in the woods that are already in there. So I think I speak for a lot of us um, who love Donne and it may have been, I remember one of my subscribers said it was the first they tried from the house and they were hooked. And I was kind of the same way because Burbito Della Caccia was the first one I tried from the house of Argos and I was hooked. And I could see how that would happen with Donne Again, just a wonderful fragrance, very versatile. I think you could wear this any time of the year. I personally wear it more during spring or summer, but it's definitely powerful enough and resiny enough uh, to wear in the winter time and the cold weather. So it's gonna be really tough to rank these last ones. I've always loved Triumph of Bacchus, but one of my new favorites from the entire house is Fall of Phaeton. And I think I'm gonna rank Man, this is going to be tough. Let me just smell them again real quick. I've worn these actually pretty recently. So, man, that, that is just perfection right there. Boozy, tobacco, sweet. Yep. So I'm going to rank uh, Triumph, of Bac Triumph of Bacchus X-Straight. See if I can actually say that right before I rank it. I'm going to rank, rank the X-Straight as number two. 
It smells almost the exact same as the original Triumph Abacus. I went over this before, just a little bit more bass heavy, maybe a little more tonka, maybe a little more tobacco, a little bit more musk, but they didn't really change the formula. They just bumped up the oil concentration. Um, same amount of each ingredient in there from listening to Krishna Petrovic talk about it. So Triumph of Bacchus, man, x straight regular one, whichever one you grab, you're going to be good with. Beautiful fragrance, very long lasting, great projection on all of these. I believe they're all, you know, 20 to 25% oil concentration, except for the x straight is done at 40. And that does kind of help it slow down and transition holds onto those top and middle notes a little longer and it takes a little little bit more time to get to the base notes because of that slowing down of the transition and just a little bit higher concentration, but beautiful stuff, man. Triumph of Bacchus x straight again, very sweet, boozy, tobacco-y. You get a little bit of musk and uh, vanilla and amber in there, so it's slightly like warm and resiny as well. I really love um, both the original and the x straight version of Triumph of Bacchus. Kind of use them in different situations, but you can't go wrong grabbing the X-Trade if you're looking for something a little bit more collectible and a little bit more long lasting. Uh, I would definitely recommend the X-Trade. But number one for me, for the entire house of Argos, it's gotta be Fall of Phaeton. It's very bright in the opening. It's got cardamom, ginger, some citrus notes. It's got some florals and agar wood and the heart notes and just some beautiful dry down. You got musk, leather, vanilla, very rich, creamy, powerful dry down. This fragrance is just everything I look for in a niche fragrance. And I think a lot of people that have tried it have really enjoyed it. Again, it's just really unique. It really is. It's just, it goes through kind of like all three phases. And I said this in the, in the individual review of this before, but it's almost like it starts out like the story of Fall of Phaeton where it's kind of bright, lively, and you have kind of the smoldering notes of the agar wood and kind of how it goes down into a deeper, richer, darker transition. And you could maybe, you know, coincide that with the story of him being struck down by Zeus's thunderbolt, falling from his chariot. This fragrance definitely still tells a story. And I think Kristen Petrovic did a good job of blending it. I would imagine of all the new fragrances that he has released, including Love Triumphs Over War, you could probably put Neiman Lion in there as well, even though I realize that's not a new release, it's just been re-released. Um, I would imagine that Fall of Phaeton was very, very tough for him to blend and get correct. There are quite a few powerful notes in there and each one could have overpowered the other. So it's interesting to see kind of the harmony of that take place, how you do get some nice, sweet, fresh, spicy citrus notes and you have the agar wood with the florals and the heart notes. And then again, transition to that deeper, richer, you know, leathery and musk and vanilla, kind of sweeter, creamier, deeper and richer notes in the base. Um, for me, Fall of Phaeton is just wonderful stuff. So again, guys, very tough to rank these. Argos has so many good fragrances. So put your top five or top 10 down below. Let me know what you like from the house. And um, yeah, I got a couple more videos coming. I got some um, wash. I think I'm going to do a top 10 on there pretty soon. I got a Christmas special coming up, but yeah, this, this was supposed to be done about two weeks ago, this video, and I really wanted to wear each one in very, very close, you know, time frames to make sure that I got this video correct. Not a whole lot changed. I think the most surprising thing for me, I was actually going to rank Neiman Lion number one just for its uniqueness, and the video was more about, you know, what I personally enjoy from the house the most, and this could always change depending on season. In fact, for cold weather, I'd probably tell you right now, it's Triumph of Bacchus x straight Fall of Phaeton, Neiman Lion, and Birth of Venus are probably going to be getting the most work uh, this winter time and during the cold weather as long as we have that. So again, guys, beautiful house. If you haven't tried a lot of the stuff from Argos, get some samples, do some research, but one of my favorite houses for sure. Um, they only have, I think, 13 total fragrances at, at this time, so... They've done a good job of focusing on keeping it small while keeping up the quality. So I think I speak for a lot of us when I say I hope they continue to do that. Hope everybody has a great day and I'll be seeing you soon. All right. Bye.